In today's uh, this last presentation, we will look at how uh, we will try to understand what are business processes and uh, how they can help you in uh, modern enterprise integration. And also, we'll try to understand what are the capabilities provided by WC2 Business Process Server and uh, <coughs> uh, how you can use a WC2 Business Process Server for your integration needs. So if you look at uh, today's, uh, today how we do business, uh, it's a very complex process. As you can uh, see from the slide, uh, if you take in an organization, it will have uh, many parts that are functioning together to achieve uh, the business. For example, you will have a head office, branches, warehouses, uh, shipping agents, partners, customers, etc. And uh, they may be uh, geographically distributed as well. <coughs> so <coughs> when you are operating uh, such a complex business, the, whether you get the control or you lose the control, depending on uh, how much integration you have within your organization. So if you have uh, integrated all your systems together, and then uh, if you have implemented proper monitoring, then uh, you have very good control over how your business is functioning. And then uh, <coughs> uh, you can control and change uh, the processes so that uh, you can uh, improve how your business functions. So if you take a, a scenario where there is a customer who is ordering a product, and then uh, you are shipping that product uh, to that customer. So if you take that scenario, then uh, you will have uh, many things in involved, uh, such as uh, the the actual customer who is ordering the product, and then uh, you have to uh, <coughs> find an, you have to have an employee who will process that request, and then you will have to get the actual product, package it, and ship it, and then uh, you have to manage the inventory, and so forth. So you, you can uh, wire up this uh, complex process into a business process. Once you do that, you have the uh, entire process streamlined so that uh, uh, from uh, the point where the customer actually ordering the product to the ship product being uh, delivered to the customer, the everything is handled through the system. So that gives you a very streamlined process as well as uh, you can get good control over how things are happening. So if you look at the definition of a business process, business process is a set of events, activities, and decision points that involves a number of actors and objects, and uh, that collectively lead to an outcome that is of value to organization or to its customers. So if you take, a, uh, for example, what is an event? Event is something that happens immediately. For example, you go to a web page, and uh, you press uh, Submit button. That's an event, which can trigger a process. And then uh, there are activities, such as uh, uh, doing a service call, or someone, a human, taking uh, a form and doing an approval, and uh, so forth. And then there are decision points. Decision points are where you decide whether you do this or do you do that. So, so in a business process, there will be events, activities, and then decision points. And they, they may involve humans as well as systems. And then all this uh, sequence of activities leads to a useful outcome to the organization. So if you take uh, any organization, you will find that uh, there are thousands of processes. For example, if you take WS2, you will have interview process, you will have a performance evaluation process, you will have a travel booking process, and so forth. And if you take one of the processes, you can find that there are a number of steps within the process. 
For example, the, in this uh, material procurement process, we have the, uh, the process is initiated with the review procurement request. And after that, you select the suppliers. And then uh, after selecting the suppliers, uh, you select, uh, actually, there is an error in the slide, so I'll go ahead. So, uh, so when after you have identified the processes in the organization, uh, you can uh, think of this concept of uh, business process management. The, con the idea of business process management is the art and science of uh, looking at how <coughs> work is performed in an organization and then uh, making sure that uh, the work is done in a consistent manner. <coughs> and also improving uh, the way the work is done so that you achieve efficiency as well as uh, reduce cost and reduce processing time, etc. So in this uh, business process management, there is a life cycle. Uh, the initial phase, uh, what you would do is you will identify all the processes in the organization. That is the process identifying and designing phase. Once you have identified the, the processes in the organization, what you can do is uh, you can analyze <coughs> and uh, decide on uh, which processes you can automate. And uh, there will always be a set of processes that, are, that, are, that have to be executed manually, but uh, there are processes which you can automate, and that automation will give you <coughs> business value. And then, uh, once you have uh, performed the analysis, you can go to this implementation phase. That is where you will model the process and then uh, use a process server to execute the modeled process. And then uh, after you have uh, modeled the process and deployed it into a server where the processes are getting executed, then uh, you have to monitor them so that uh, you can Im continue to improve uh, the process. So you can, uh, by monitoring process, you can uh, find out what are the bottlenecks, what are the places you can improve. So in this uh, presentation, I will uh, basically look at this uh, process implementation phase and uh, process monitoring phase. There's uh, another talk coming up tomorrow by Chatura, and he will uh, look at this whole business process management life cycle with the uh, process center. <coughs> so in uh, uh, the process implementation phase, uh, what you will do is uh, you will uh, model the business process. So in modeling the business process, there are a set of steps that you can follow. Uh, the first one is identifying the process boundaries. Uh, if you take an organization, all these, uh, you will have many processes and most of the time, these processes are interconnected. Therefore, you have to identify the process boundary or the scope so that uh, you can define a particular process. <coughs> and then uh, the next step is to identify what are the events and activities involved in this particular process. And then you have to identify the resources. What are the systems and the people uh, who are involved in the pro <coughs> Uh, involved in the process and how they hand over from one step to the other. And then uh, you have to identify the control flow or how the execution flows through the set of activities. So the, uh, if you look at uh, the resources, uh, so <coughs> in a business process, uh, you can uh, assign specific uh, tasks to users and roles. So in this uh, scenario example, we have a BPMN modeled process where this is a material procurement process. So here <coughs> you have uh, the supervisor who is uh, looking at the uh, approval of the request, and then you have a procurement staff given a task, and you have employee, you have a procurement manager, and so forth. <coughs> and in the control flow, <coughs> Uh, you can define uh, how the process control, uh, how the control of the process flows through the process. 
So uh, the task can be executed sequentially. So in the, this scenario, you can uh, see that this is a, a sequential flow from one task to the next task. And then uh, you can have conditional flow, or if conditions. So the uh, control will uh, divide either this path or this path, depending on the condition. And then uh, you can have uh, uh, event-triggered flows. For example, here there is an event happening, and then uh, the flow goes through this path. And then uh, you can have parallel execution, where the uh, control goes through both paths. Uh, so these two tasks are executed parallelly. And then uh, resources, what are <coughs> In a business process, uh, you can <coughs> have a scenario where you want to make a service call to an external system. Or you can have uh, uh, scripts executing or Java code executing, which can connect to external systems. So, <coughs> and then uh, the, uh, within the process, uh, there will be uh, data involved with each of the activities. So this data uh, elements uh, will be handed over from uh, uh, one step to the other. So the, the, the data from here to here will flow. And uh, once you have uh, modeled your process, uh, there are multiple implementation methodologies. For example, in the, your process, you will have different services to implement. And then uh, you will have the actual business process to implement. And uh, then, uh, <coughs> so within the WS2 platform, uh, we have a set of products that enables you to um, implement this uh, process. For example, uh, uh, with the WS2 business process server, uh, you can deploy processes modeled in either BPMN or people. Uh, so in this scenario, we have uh, this item sales process deployed in business process server. And uh, similarly, we have the procurement process deployed in the business process server. And then if you have any services, uh, you can uh, deploy them in the application server. And also with the invent of uh, microservices uh, framework for Java, you can uh, implement your service as a microservice and uh, deploy it as well. And then uh, if you have a UIs, you can deploy them in uh, application server as well. And then uh, in a scenario where you want to connect to a database system, then we can use the uh, WSO2 data services server uh, to uh, expose the data in the database system as a service and then connect to that through your process. So what happens uh, if you are you doing this process uh, manually, instead of using uh, a business uh, process system? So uh, when uh, changes happen, for example, there can be changes to rules. For example, there's a loan approval process, and now there's a new rule that says that if the loan is greater than $10,000, it has to be approved by a manager. And then uh, there can be change of responsibility happening. For example, the delivery person has to now collect the uh, payment as well. So like that, when changes happen, <coughs> if you are doing these uh, processes manually, uh, you will have uh, the uh, very low visibility. And uh, if you had implemented it in the process server or a process system, then uh, you, what, you, what will happen is you will go and make that change in the process system, and then uh, all the people involved in the process, uh, involved in uh, executing the processes, uh, will have the visibility. And then uh, if you're doing it manually, then people can uh, do it in the way they want, rather than the way you want it to actually execute. And then uh, if you have uh, modeled the process using uh, uh, and uh, implemented it as a process, then uh, you will obviously have the documentation. That means, uh, say, for example, you modeled your process using BPMN, 
then the exact model of how the steps and uh, what is the execution order, all of that is available in the process itself. So, <coughs> so there are many advantages of uh, using a workflow system or a BPMS instead of uh, doing this manually. And uh, next, uh, we will look at uh, what are the functionality that is provided by WC2 Business Process Server for automating your business process. So within uh, WC2 Business Process Server, we support uh, BPMN as well as uh, WS people. BPMN is uh, currently the most popular uh, business process modeling uh, language. And uh, it provides uh, uh, all the capabilities that you might need to model uh, and execute a business process. And then uh, we have the support for WS Beeple as well. WS Beeple was the, the, the language that is uh, before BPMN came into popularity. So the, the Beeple is tightly coupled to SOAP-based services. So if you are implementing a, a complex orchestration uh, with uh, SOAP-based systems, then uh, WS Beeple is the ideal way to go. And in addition to that, uh, within WS2 Business Process Server, we have the WS Human Tasks and WS uh, People for People uh, spec implementations. So we have uh, our own uh, uh, Human Task Engine implemented and uh, People for People specification also partially implemented. So BPMN and People capabilities, uh, we use these two open source uh, engines, Activity and Apache Ode. So activity we are using as the BPMN runtime, and uh, Apache Ode we are using as the uh, Beeple runtime. <coughs> and then uh, uh, in uh, process server, we provide uh, clustering capability, and uh, we provide Eclipse-based uh, graphical process modeling. And also, we provide uh, a, a customizable web UIs, uh, which are based on uh, APIs for both uh, BPMN and human tasks. <coughs> so if you look at uh, how uh, the business process server will function within an organization, this uh, diagram uh, gives you a, a, a quick view of it. Uh, so here, what you will have is the deployed business process. And then uh, it will expose a set of APIs for both human tasks as well as for BPMN. And then uh, on top of these APIs, uh, you can implement the task list or the, the UI which, with which the users will interact. And then uh, the processes deployed within the process server can interact with these different uh, WSO2 servers or external systems. <coughs> to uh, execute your process. And uh, then uh, the business process server also provides graphical UI for the management activities. So what happens uh, when you deploy and run a process within the business process server? <coughs> so you have, uh, once you have deployed your process implementation, uh, it will go into the uh, database system that is associated with the process server. And uh, then you will have, uh, in case of a BPMN process, uh, you will have uh, this REST API uh, exposed. And uh, that is what the users of the And uh, <coughs> then, uh, so when you do a call to start the process, what will happen is uh, within the server, uh, it will look up the process definition and then uh, create an instance of that process definition. And uh, then uh, once the execution control is over, that uh, instance will be persisted back to the database as well. <coughs> so in case of a Beeple process deployed, uh, what you will have is a set of uh, SOAP services exposed. And then uh, the interaction will be a SOAP call. And again, uh, the instance of a process will be created and uh, saved to the persistent store. 
So this is uh, the process view uh, provided by the business process server. Uh, you can uh, see what are the <coughs> process uh, information and the process definition. And uh, this is the instance view for a BPMN process. One, as you can uh, see, the, the, the variables and the current state of the execution of the process is available from the instance view. And then uh, in the process view, this is the customizable uh, web application that we provide, built on top of the REST APIs exposed by the runtime. So here, <coughs> uh, you can uh, see the process definitions, and uh, then you can go and uh, start the process. But this is, uh, uh, in most of an in your integration, what, will, uh, what you will have is uh, your own application UI which is invoking the API is exposed by the process server. And uh, this is the task view. So there you can, uh, you have the capabilities such as uh, uh, assigning the task to a different user, then uh, uh, you can uh, skip, fail, reassign, complete, and so forth. And then uh, we come to the important topic of uh, process monitoring. <coughs> so uh, in case of a business process server, <coughs> uh, you have uh, the process execution here, and then uh, you have the web console or the monitoring console. And uh, when the processes are executed, the process uh, execution data is already available uh, within the persistence store. So there are two ways of uh, monitoring uh, processes because uh, we already have execution data once the process is executed. And also we publish this uh, execution events to data analytics server so that uh, we can perform advanced analytics on top of this data and then uh, build dashboards on top of that. So these are some of the uh, monitoring dashboards uh, that is uh, built into WS2 Business Process Server. <coughs> so as you can uh, see, you can uh, uh, see the process instance count, uh, the number of active process, and the completed process, and uh, so forth. And then uh, you can have uh, additional analytics, such as uh, how many pro uh, tasks were completed by a given user. Uh, what is the average execution time for a given process, and so forth. So this is uh, the, uh, these are some of the graphs uh, provided by the business process server. In addition to that, <coughs> the process center will have a lot of advanced drill down graphs, uh, providing you much better business intelligence for your process. And then uh, the process life cycle. So once you have uh, the process executing, uh, then it's a continuous life cycle of improvement. You have the process executed, you collect execution data, and then you analyze the KPIs, and then uh, you identify what are the improvements uh, you can make to the process. So it could be either improvement to the actual business process or improvement to the, the people or the uh, work that is involved in the process. So you can implement a new version of the process and uh, you can deploy it. And so this is a continuous cycle. <coughs> and then uh, there's this uh, important question that is uh, often asked. That is, uh, you are doing an integration project and uh, there's scenarios uh, where you can either use the process server or you can use the uh, ESB. So some of the key differentiators between uh, 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 scenarios where you will use uh, business process versus integration flows are as follows. So uh, one of the key differentiators is the uh, time. Uh, if you are running a ESB integration, it will be a very short running process, which might take milliseconds and uh, seconds. But in case of a business process, it may execute for days, months. And then uh, another differentiator is uh, the human interactions. So in a business process, you will always have a lot of human interactions for approvals and so forth. 
And in case of uh, integration flow, what you will have uh, is uh, a lot of system interactions. And then uh, another differentiator is the how complex the process is. So in case of a business process, it can be really complex uh, with a lot of uh, external service calls, uh, compensation handling, error handling, and so forth. But in case of a, a ESB flow, it will be often be a, a relatively simple flow. And uh, another differentiator is the persistence. So with ESB also, you can implement uh, persistence uh, with uh, using JMS and so forth. But often, if you need uh, persistence, the business processes are the way to go. And then uh, we come to the final slide. So what are the advantages of uh, business process-based integration? So one of the, the key advantages is it improves the process quality. Uh, imagine you were performing uh, a process manually. And now you have uh, uh, implemented it as a process and have automated. Now, obviously, there is going to be a quality improvement, because uh, now there is a set of sequential steps which is automated by the uh, software system, so the, the people who are involved with the system can interact with a specific user interface and execute the process. So uh, the uh, obvious advantage, uh, first one is the improvement in process and the service quality delivered. And then uh, once you have a model and imp uh, implement a process, you automatically get the documentation of uh, how the exact set of steps that you perform for a particular task. And then uh, you can easily implement regulation compliances. Uh, <clears throat> in an organization, you often have uh, the, the government regulations, for example, differences in taxes, uh, changes in uh, uh, various rules and so forth. So if you have a workflow system uh, implemented, then you can easily become regulation compliant. And of course, uh, because of the improvement to the process, uh, you can also uh, reduce the resource requirements, because uh, now you have automated what was a manual process, and uh, that reduces your resource requirements as well. And uh, another automatic advantage that you get is the rule enforcement. Uh, when a manual process is happening, there can be uh, various violations of uh, the process. But once you have automated, you automatically get the, the, all the rules enforced. <coughs> and also, uh, due to the automation, you can uh, avoid a lot of the errors that are, are inherent in a manual process. So there are some of the advantages that you can gain uh, by incorporating a business process system into your enterprise integration. Mm -hmm.